Yeah, 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 just do some crazy now, yeah. Numbers. Yeah, bit marking. Yeah. Yeah. Mmm. Right, okay, so we're going to display this data we've got um, about Mr. Jones' instructions in a stem leaf diagram. We've all seen it before. Nice easy tactic. So, best thing to do is look for the highest value and the lowest value first. So, I can see the highest value looks like 51 over here, and looks like the lowest value is in the teens somewhere. We've got 15 so far, that looks like my lowest value. Okay, so I'm going to start off, and I'm starting to say, well, I'm going to put the 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. And then I can go and fill them in. Now a good tactic I use, I like circle things in the tens. Or in the teenies, depends what you want to say. Um, and then I'll go through in order and chop them, chop them off and fill them in. So I'll go 15, 15, they're the lowest ones. So I'll put a five, five. Notice I don't use a comma, because I don't need to, because all these in here will be single digits. Um, and a 16. And I can carry on, I can do this. Okay? After a while of doing that, you should have a stem and leaf diagram that looks like this. You can write stem and leaf there, but that's optional. Right, now once we've got this, it's ordered. Everything's in order, so we can go and work out things like quartiles and medians, and we can do that. But there's something really important that I need to say before we get on with it, so I need to make sure I've got a key. Bit of an important learning point. So I want to say one, and then if you have a line, make it slightly bigger, five, that means 15. I think this is in minutes, so I want to put mins. Right. Now we're going to work out our quartiles Q1, Q2, Q3, um, and I need to use the four parts method. I know that because it's discrete data, I know every value, so I can make my four parts. Okay, here's my four parts. I know I've got 16 pieces, so four rows of four, 16. Divide that by four, gives me four in each one. So my quartiles, my Q1, the lower quartile, uh, is there, and that's between the fourth and the fifth value, the 4.5. Uh, here's my Q2, my median, and that's in between the eighth and ninth, the 8.5. And here, the Q3, the upper quartile, so it's 12, so 12.5, 12.5 value. So all I need to do now, in order, and between the fourth and the fifth data, in between there, we're good, one, two, three, four, so we're looking here, so that'll be 17.5. Um, Q2, slip so in the 8th and the 9th there, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so it's there, so 21.5. And then Q3 is between the, the 12th um, and the 13th. Now I, I'm going to cheat here a little bit, I want to go backwards 4, because I can see, I can count backwards. Um, and it's going to be the 23rd. You can count forward as well, you'll get the same one. So I've got all my data there, and I think on your note sheet it might ask the interquartile range. And obviously I'll do that by doing the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. I'll be quick for IQ, I'll always be precise. Um, and that's going to be 23, take 17.5, and hopefully, if you get that right, it's 5.5. And I can feel Dr. nodding in the background, so we're good. And once again, I'll use some units. Okay, and that's a nice easy stem relief. You should remember that from GCSE, and I think we're just going to take that a little bit further in a moment. Okay, so we can see already on the right hand side we have the stem and leaf of Mr. Jenner's Clash of Clowns sesh, uh, all laid out for us neatly, as you saw made by Mr. Newton. Now we're going to add in all Mr. Newton's distractions. So we're going to do this in a back to back stem and leaf. So we're sharing the stem, and obviously Mr. Jenner's data comes out to the right, and we're going to go from the smallest value closest to the stem out to the left. So I've got to look for where my smallest values are. Well I've got all of these values which are less than 10. So they're going to be my smallest and then the very smallest of them is 1. So I've got 1 coming in here, then I've got 
eight, and then nine. So that's all my values below 10. Then I look for all of my teens. I go across, I've got this value, this value, this value, and this value. And so I'm going to, in much the same way, I'm going to add my 6 in here, because that's my smallest value. I'm going to add in my 7s here, because I've got two 17s. So 7 will go there, and 7 will go there. And we can keep adding the leaves in this way. In fact, you might want to pause, because I'm going to go into my zone and, and fill out the rest of this. So if I just here. And you can see I'm finished. Now, I say finished, we're missing a couple of key pieces of information. Key piece of information number one is our key. Uh, so along the top here, because we've got two sides to our stem and leaf, we're obviously going to need to make sure that they can read it right. So on the right hand side, if I pick something like 1, 6, I can say 1, 6 means 16 and then on the right hand side I have to be a little bit careful because the data is the other way around so if I was picking 16 here I would say 6 1 means 16 all right so we've got our key in all the data is laid out we've got our keys what's next for us to find is our median and quartiles to get that into quartile range. So we're going to have to do our four pots. Now, helpfully, there is 16 pieces of data here as well. So if we draw our four pots, I've got 16 divided by 4 equals 4. So I'm going to put four pieces of data in each one and I'm going to go for my quartiles are here so Q1 will be between the fourth and fifth piece of data, my lower quartile I've got Q2, the median between my eighth and ninth so that's 4.5 8.5 and then I've got Q3, my upper quartile, that's between my uh, 12th and 13th, so my 12.5 piece of data. Alright, so when I look across, I can see 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's between 16 and 17, so Q1, my lower quartile, is 16.5. Q2, well that's my between my 8th and 9th, so 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, so between my 8th and 9th, that's between 21 and 22, so 21.5, and then for my upper quartile, well I can keep going up, so 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, so you have to stop and think for a second there because that's between your 23rd and 29 minutes, so when you add 23 to 29 and divide by 2, that will get you 26, so my third quartile is 26, and when I put in all my units, obviously this is all in minutes distracted, alright, I should probably put that in here too. So finally, to get that into quartile range, I'm just going to do my third quartile, take away my first quartile, so that's going to be 26 minus 16.5, so that was 9.5 minutes.
I'm an outlier. Right, so we're going to look at the idea of outliers. Now, it makes sense that an outlier is a piece of data that is a long way from the rest of them. So if we look at this example, then I guess we might consider 67 to be an outlier. Right, so if we suspect this of being an outlier, then we need some measure of deciding if it is or isn't. Now, this is where we use these rules. Now, this isn't set in stone, but these are the usual uh, calculations we do. And in the exam, they will be given to you, and it's normally these. So what we're saying is, something is an outlier if it is 1.5 times the interquartile range above Q3. So that will be an outlier at the top end. Or, an outlier, but you have an outlier at the bottom end if it is 1.5 times the interquartile range below Q1. So let's have a look at this, to see if this figure that we suspect is an outlier actually is. Well, if we were to look at this, this data, um, we can probably tell that that's the median, and this is um, Q1, and this one is Q3. You can verify that if you want. Okay. So we've got the interquartile range, is 32 minus 22, which is 10. So let's look to see if we've got any big outliers or upper outliers, so UO. So for this, we take Q3, which is 32. We add on 1.5 lots of the interquartile range, which is 10. And we do that calculation. That's 15. 32 plus 15 is 47. So what we're saying is anything above 47 must be an outlier. So therefore, 67 is an outlier. Now let's just check that these aren't outliers at the other end. So let's look for lower outliers. Well, this time we take Q1, which is 22, and we subtract 1.5 times the interquartile range. So 22 minus 15, that is... Uh, 7, and so we're saying anything that is below 7 would be a low outlier. Well, there isn't anything below 7, so there are no outliers at that end. So the only outlier for this data would be the 67. Right, okay guys, so we've just learned about outliers and we've come back to this stem and leaf diagram here. Now, the main things we need to work out outliers, we need to find the interquartile range, we know the upper and lower quartile. So I've got them here from that, that stem and leaf diagram we just worked out. Um, so the rule is we're going to start from, if I want to find where the upper bound for the outliers is, um, I'm going to start off with the upper quartile. I'm going to add on one and a half times the interquartile range. Now you can just type that in your calculator and it comes up as 31.25. So then I can look back at my data and at 31.25, uh, well this one isn't an outlier, it's just below that boundary. Um, but it looks like there is a boundary, uh, but this one is above the boundary here, 51. So 51 is an outlier. Okay. Um, so, or we could use this sign there for, you know, 51 is an outlier. And you'll need to write that down um, on your exam obviously, so you can read it, unlike me. If we want to go for a um, lower bound for outliers, then we're going to start off with the lower quartile, and we take off 1.5 times the interquartile range. And once again, you can just have that in your calculator, and we get 9.25. Look back at the data, 9.25. Well, everything's above that, so there's nothing below it, there's nothing that we're going to class as an outlier. Okay. No outliers there. So the outliers with Mr. Jenner's data was just this one here, 51, where he had an absolute massive session on Clash of Clans. So, now that we've got all that data, we can work out if there are any outliers. So, just as we did with Mr. Jenner's, we can say our upper 
outliers is going to equal our upper quartile, that's 26 minutes, plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. And when you crunch those numbers, you'll get 40.25 minutes. So when we compare that to the data, well I've got 37 minutes here and I've got 48 and 57, so there are two outliers. So therefore, draw my little triangle, therefore my upper outliers equal 48 minutes and 57 minutes. Okay, what about at the lower end? Well, my lower outliers is going to equal my lower quartile minus this time 1.5 times the interquartile range of 9.5. And when we think about what that equals, we get 2.25. Minutes. So if I look at my stem and leaf, I've got anything less than 2.25 minutes. Well, it's just this value here when he was distracted for one minute. I think that was a particularly beautiful butterfly. So there's that one outlier at the bottom, lower outlier equals one min. And those are all our outliers. Okay, so we're going to draw a box plot to show Mr. Jenner's data. Now, box plot will show six pieces of important information about the data. Just like G GCSE, it shows the highest value and the lowest value. The two uh, Q1, Q2, and Q3. But also in S1, it also so shows the outliers. So, we're going to start with the outlier. So we know that 51 is an outlier, and we can show that by putting a cross. So at 51, I'm going to put a cross, which is about there. Now, I'm going to do the, the highest value. Now, we know that 51 was the highest piece of data, but that's an outlier. So we're going to go to the next highest value, and that's where our box plot is going to end. So that is at 31, which is... There. Right, the lowest value is 15, so I'll plot that there. Now we've got Q1 is 17.5, well 17 would be there, so 17.5 is about there. Uh, the median is 21.5. So that is about there, and finally Q3 is 23, which will be there. And we can join it up just like we did at GCSE. And so it looks like that. So we can see very clearly that this is the only outlier. Right, what you should do is you should have a go at doing the same thing for Mr. Newton's data. Right, I've partially completed the box plot for Mr. Newton's data. As you can see, I've put the outliers at 48 and 57, and uh, an outlier at one minute, and I've plotted the quartiles at 16.5 minutes, 21.5 minutes, 26 minutes. So all that's left to do is to do the highest and lowest values. Now, we know that 57 and 48 are outliers, so the next highest value is 37. So I can plot that on 37, which is right there. Ignore that spot. 
and the lowest value is now at 8. There, so I now join up the box plot. Like that. So hopefully that's what your box plot looks like. And I'm going to finish it off by writing Mr. Newton next to it. Really quick, that epic pan. I mean, mate, I followed you there brilliantly. Right? <laughs> that was an amazing pan. The box plot, uh, the. <laughs> wow. I've messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> He's <laughs> ever fixed it. That was such a poor. <laughs> 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 <laughs>